Welcome back to Botany class. In the previous class, we discussed about tools of genetic engineering. Today, let's going to concentrate types of vectors. What are vectors? Today, we are going to learn types of vector. Before that, what is vector? Vector is a small DNA molecule capable of self replication and it carries and transfer the genetic information. So, here there are number of vectors. Today the topic is types of vector. There are few types of vectors. The most commonly used vector is plasmid. As you know, plasmids are very very important vectors can be used. These plasmids are present in bacterial cell. In the bacteria, if you take a bacterial cell which consists of a bacterial chromosome, this is the nucleoid nucleoid or bacterial chromosome which contains extra chromosomal circular DNA. So, these are named as plasmid. So, first question what are plasmid? Plasmids are extra circular chromosomal DNA capable of self replicating. These plasmids are able to replicate self, self replicating double stranded DNA, DS DNA. This is double stranded circular DNA that is vector. So, this plasmid so, first write about plasmid, very important question, either 2 mark or 3 mark, it is important, what are plasmids? Plasmids are extra circular chromosomal, extra circular chromosome in addition to the normal nuclear, this is the normal bacterial chromosome, in addition to that another extra circular DNA, double stranded DNA which is capable of self replicating. The main feature of this plasmid is self replicating. Because of this self replication, it is used as a cloning vehicle. So, these vectors are otherwise called cloning vehicle. Vectors are called as cloning vehicles. So, these cloning vehicles, it carries the recombinant DNA and it introduced into a host. So, there are different types of plasmid. In your book, there are two different types of plasmids are given. One is PBR322, another one TI plasmid. So, today you are going to concentrate these two different types of plasmid types of vectors. So, this PBR322, PBR322 plasmid is reconstructed plasmid. So, PBR322 is a reconstructed plasmid. So, this plasmid is widely used. So, this PBR322, it contains several base pairs. There are 4361 base pairs are present in it. So, PBR322 which contains 4361 base pairs and the name this PBR322 the name denoted P, P denoted plasmid. So, this P it denoted plasmid 
and this BR represent the scientist name of the scientist Bolivar and the name of the scientist B and R the B which represent Bolivar and Rodriguez R Rodriguez Bolivar and Rodriguez so first P denotes plasmid this B represent the name of the scientist Bolivar and R represents the name of the scientist Rodriguez these two scientists who discovered this PBR 322 and the number 322 is the number of the plasmid which developed in the laboratory so this is the number which developed in the laboratory 322 P P is the plasmid, BR represents the name of the scientist who discovered respectively Bolivar and Rodriguez. The so one word, two more questions, this, this is very important. And this PBR 322 contains how many base pairs? 4361 base pairs. Look at this diagram. PBR 322 this is the plasmid called PBR 322 which contains different regions there are different sites are present in the plasmid look at this diagram here there is this PBR 322 consists of antibiotic resistance region there are two antibiotic resistance called AMP or AMP or and TET or AMP AMP is ampicillin TET tetracycline so it contains two different antibiotic resistant sites AMP or and TET or so here it is in this picture this this color which denotes AMP or and TET or ampicillin resistant antibiotic resistant two antibiotic resistance site ampicillin resistance and tetracycline resistance and it consists of different recognition sites the recognition sites are named as ECOR1 replication enzymes which recognizes the sites in the plasmid hint 3 BAM H1 or the areas so these are the sites recognition sites present in the PBR 322 and it contains a ORI region so this ORI, ORI is origin origin of replication so it initiates origin of replication is ORI which contains all plasmids which contains this ORI and another region is there ROP ROP is the protein involved in replication ROP codes the replication of proteins so these all parts are present in the PBR322 so first two more question what are plasmid plasmids present in bacteria so all bacteria which contains plasmids here this this plasmid PBR322 so if they ask three more question or two more question you draw this diagram neatly and label all the parts and write about each and every part PBR322 is a reconstructed plasmid which contains how many base pairs 4361 base pairs and the name of this plasmid is denoted by P represent plasmid B and R represent the name of the scientist who developed this plasmid that is Bolivar and Rodriguez respectively 
and the number of this plasmid which is obtained in the laboratory is 322 and there are different regions what are the regions here here is the am uh, there is a antibiotic resistant region ORI region and recognition sites name all this and write this then ROP ROP that codes the protein which involved for replication another plasmid TI plasmid this plasmid TI plasmid this plasmid is found in agrobacterium tumefaciens tumefaciens agrobacterium tumefaciens is the bacteria which induces crown gall disease which induces tumors in most of the dicot plants so this ta plant tumor inducing gene the plasmid is tumor inducing gene so this gene ti which contains the t this ta plasmid say this is the diagram ta plasmid which contains t dna region among from this ta plasmid the t from ta plasmid t is transferred because the gene contains tra tra so tra gene so tra gene which transfers the t plasmid from ti ti is one word question what is ti tumor inducing plasmid ti plasmid is tumor inducing plasmid present in agrobacterium tumefaciens agrobacterium tumefaciens is the bacteria which contains a gene called ti plasmid so this ti plasmid from ti t is transferred and through this this t is transferred through tra gene so it possesses tra gene and it consists of onc onc for oncogenicity so onc represent oncogene this is transfer gene it transfer tra oncogenicity and one more inc for incompatibility so these three genes are encodes inc tra onc so this is important in ta plasmid these three genes are important so inc represents incompatibility tra tra used for transfer the gene from ti inducing plasmid ti tumor inducing plasmid t is transferred then this ONC, 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 these are the regions it present. This is the ORI region, ORI, which is the origin of replication, ORI gene. So, two kinds of plasmids you are going to learn PBR322 and TI plasmid. So, three paragraphs it is given plasmid. First, you learn about the plasmid, already you learned in the lower classes. Now PBR322 and TI plasmid. You may heard this TI plasmid, tumor inducing plasmid. It is present in agrobacterium tumefaciens and these are the three different genes present in TI plasmid. Now this TI after, now this is the types of vectors. Second question, competent of host competent of host what's this competent of host now vector is ready and recombinant dna or dna is prepared so here one example formation of r dna how the r dna is formed look at this diagram formation of r dna r dna is recombinant dna the recombinant DNA, the desirable gene can be isolated from any one of the organism, either human or plant or animal and this DNA sequence can be cut open from any one of the organism, any one of the cell 
and introduce it into the vector. Now you learn the different types of vector. So here the plasmid is act as a vector. It act as a cloning vehicle. So this is a plasmid. In this plasmid, it coats. The plasmid has to cut open. At the same time, the selected or isolated DNA from the desirable gene can be cut open with the help of same restriction endonucleases. Here the restriction endonucleases commonly used restriction endonucleases are ECO or 1, E. coli restriction enzyme 1 because it was the first enzyme to be discovered. And this ECORI, see this is the DNA sequence of the plasmid. This is the DNA sequence of the foreign DNA, foreign gene. Foreign gene is the desirable gene. What are the genes desirable? It is able to introduce it by means of restriction en enzyme and ligase. These two enzymes are very important to make recombinant DNA. So, this is the DNA sequence which consists of A, G, A, A, T, T, C. So, the, it's double stranded, the complementary strand is guan, guanine combines with cytosine and adenine, thymine, adenine, thymine, thymine, adenine, thymine, adenine, cytosine, guanine. So, adenine, guanine, thymine, cytosine. These complementary strands always, there is a base pair rule, you know about it. So, this pass here this arrow which represents the cut end of this ECORI apply this ECORI which cuts open here this area it is going to cut in the plasmid after cutting it produces a sticky ends so there are two ends either it can cut in the center of the DNA sequence or in any one side so here it is a sticky ends it cuts in the side and here in this foreign DNA it cuts here this is restriction endonucleases when it cuts open this sequence can be cut this G and here this G so this region is found here sticky ends complementary sticky ends this is the sticky end of the isolated DNA selected DNA this is the sticky end of the plasmid. So, both are going to join by means of DNA ligase. So, this is the enzyme DNA ligase and this end and this end are joined here. It can be joined by this. So, the nix, nix in the sugar phosphate bonds are sealed by DNA ligase. So, as a result, this recombinant gene is obtained. Recombinant DNA is obtained. Newly formed DNA. Two different genes are joined together. As a result, recombinant DNA is formed. So, here vector is ready. This is the vector. Common vector used as E. coli. This is E. coli, Escherichia coli, because of several reasons, this E. coli is selected. So, this competent of host, now this recombinant DNA can be introduced it into the host, but since this DNA is hydrophilic in nature, which dissolves in water, it cannot pass through the cell membrane of this bacteria or any other plant there are so many host host may varies plant cell or animal cell or this bacteria or fungus yeast or e coli anyone so most commonly used is e coli because of some reasons this e coli the study of this is this extensively studied this e coli and the very important feature of selecting this E. coli is in the optimum condition it replicates within 20 minutes the cell divides every 20 minutes it divides and it is easy to handle and it has high range of host specificity so it, uh, it, uh, it can accept 
all uh, several kinds of vectors so this e coli is selected so one of the main reason is it divides in optimum condition every 20 minutes it divides the cell divides e coli cells so it used as a vector recombinant dna dna molecule is hydrophilic in nature what is meant by hydrophilic it dissolve in water so it cannot pass through this cell wall cell membrane it do not pass through the cell membrane so it has to be competent so after selecting this vector and making this recombinant dna it can be competent the host can be competent how to compete it there is a specific treatment to compete the cell if the cell is compete this recombinant dna enters into because it's hydrophilic it cannot pass through the cell membrane how to compete this cell it can be treated with divalent cations that is two plus cations example calcium calcium is one of the example so this calcium divalent cations which contains double bond and this divalent cations are treated so this is selected this is treated with divalent cations and this cell is this cell along with this plasmid or vector or cloning vehicle along with the recombinant DNA is treated with on ice both the RDNA as well as the cell or host treated with treated on ice again it is treated it gives 42 degree Celsius heat again it is transfer it transferred back to ice so first it is transfer on ice then 42 degree celsius heat given again it is transferred back to ice so now this cell is compete to accept the rdna so recombinant dna can be introduced inside the plasmid so that is what competent of the host that is transfer of recombinant dna into the vector so vector can be treated compete it can be competent to accept the dna or else it cannot accept because the dna particle molecule is hydrophilic which cannot enter into the host through this membrane so this membrane can be susceptible to accept this or dna then after this process next process is method of transfer so now this rdna the plasmid which contains rdna the cloning vector which contains rdna it can be transferred into the host you know the host may be plant cell animal cell or so it depends upon various factors the methods of gene transfer depends upon several factors based on the type of vector and the type of host based on type of vectors as well as the type of host so type of vector so based on this there are two different types of gene transfer what are the two different types of gene transfer that is direct gene transfer gene transfer and indirect direct and indirect gene transfer so let's see that direct gene transfer in direct gene transfer there is no this is vectorless vectorless transfer indirect gene transfer through vector so direct direct gene transfer is vectorless no need of vectors directly the dna molecule can be transferred inside the cell uh, see this is the plant this is the plant cell here in plant cells we are studying about how to transfer the dna recombinant dna into a plant cell 
So in the plant cell, there is a cell wall and inner to this nucleus and all the cell organelles present here. So inside, this is the plasma membrane. So the target cell, the gene can be transferred into the target cell through different methods. So first method is vectorless method that is called direct gene transfer. So it, it, it based on this direct gene transfer there are several types. The first type is here chemical method of gene transfer. Number one chemical chemical method of gene transfer. Number two micro injection micro injection method of gene transfer and three there are electroporation method electroporation and fourth type that is liposome mediated gene transfer so this is the fourth type liposome mediated and the fifth type is biolistics or gene gun method. So there are five different types of gene transfer direct method. Without vector five different ways the recombinant gene can be introduced or the foreign gene can be introduced into the target cell. How to transfer? Now, first one is chemical method. Chemical method of gene transfer. There are some chemicals can be used. So, in this um, chemical method, polyethylene glycol, PEG, PEG, polyethylene glycol, polyethylene glycol, or so here in, uh, either we can use this polyethylene glycol or dextron sulfate either this one or dextron sulfate can be used chemicals these chemicals help the membrane cell membrane permeable so this membrane has to permeable to insert the gene so when it is transfer inside when it is applying or when it is immersed in chemicals when it is uh, used uh, when the chemicals are used to permeable of this cell membrane all the chemicals are not used there are certain chemicals like PEG and dextron sulfate so PEG polyethylene glycol or dextron sulfate when you immerse it it help it permit permeable this uh, cells are able to permeable to introduce the particular gene inside the target cell that is chemical method very simple method just we can apply it the chemicals or treating with a treat or subjected to chemicals what are the chemicals peg and dextran sulfate that is chemical method of gene transfer that gene can be transferred by this method second method micro injection so micro injection here this is the target cell plant cell the particles DNA particles, very small minute particles of DNA the particular gene the isolated gene or the desirable gene can be introduced it into the protoplast of this cell so inside protoplast is there the uh, protoplast the plasma membrane nucleus and this cell membrane this uh, cell organelles uh, different cell organelles like mitochondria chloroplast all these are present inside so this collectively called as protoplast so this gene is transferred into the protoplast due to micro propagation micro prop micro injection here it is micro injection the microscopic particles the dna particles can be or the gene introduce it with the help of very minute glass needles Either it is a very uh, sharp tipped 
glass needles are used to inject directly to the protoplast or there is a micro pipette is used. So, this micro pipette through this micro pipette it is directly transferred into the protoplast. So, hold this keep this protoplast or this cell immobilized in the micro microscopic slide. So, this is the microscopic slide here is the cell. So, it make it as immobilized with agarose either in the solid surface agarose or it can be hold with the help of the pipette by suction. So, if it is moves the target cell cannot reach the gene. So, it can be immobilized by this agarose that is the solid surface or the cell has to be hold by means of pipette micro pipette by suction method. Through this, this micro injection, this is the micro injection method. The DNA particle can be injected directly inside the cell, target cell. Then the third method is electroporation. Now look at this diagram, electroporation. Here is the cell, the cell which contains the plasma membrane. Here, a pulse of high voltage is given, pulse of high voltage. Through this, it creates a pore in the temporary pore in the plasma membrane. Through this pore, this genes can be transferred. Say this is the diagram before pulse, before giving pulse, pulse of high voltage, this is the cell. And after, this is the during electric field. Now, the pulse of high voltage pass across the membrane. So, it creates a pore, here it creates a pore and this is after pulse, after pulse the, this particles, here there are some substances, it can be transferred through this opening or pore in the plasma membrane. The pore is made by pulse of high voltage electricity, so high voltage. High voltage can be passed through across the membrane. So, it creates a pore in the plasma membrane and through this temporary pore. So, it can be passed through. Then, liposome mediated, liposome mediated gene transfer method. Fourth method is liposome mediated gene transfer method. What is this liposome? Liposome is artificial that is phospholipid vesicles. See this is the vesicle, phospholipid vesicle. This one. It is a phospholipid vesicle. This phospholipid vesicle holds the DNA. See this is the DNA. This DNA is hold inside the phospholipid. Phospholipid vesicle is liposome. Liposome is nothing but a phospholipid vesicle which holds the DNA. This is the desirable DNA. This DNA holds this liposome is called lipoplex. Now it forms a lipoplex. What is lipoplex? Liposome is the vesicle of what this phospholipid by lipid layer. And when the DNA is inside the liposome, now it forms a lipoplex. So, this is the cell membrane, lipid bilayer, cell membrane. Across this, this lipoplex pass through across this membrane. It enter inside the cell. This is outside the cell. This is inside the cell. So, lipoplex. This lipoplex carries the desired gene. Now, this lipid that is lipid carriers of DNA. This lipid which carries the DNA is lipoplex. Now inside the cell endosomes are present. What is endosome? All the cell organelles present inside the cell. So inside the cell there are number of cell organelles including vacuoles. So in this method here this Lipoplex enclosed, DNA is enclosed within a, lipo, a lipo, 
liposome and it forms a lipoplex then this lipoplex combines with that is this liposome outside liposome inside DNA called a lipoplex so this liposome and the vacuole you know in the plant cell the main feature of plant cell is large presence of large vacuole so vacuole is present inside the cell inside so there is a fusion of this liposome and the vacuole vacuole which contains tonoplast the membrane surrounded by vacuole is tonoplast tonoplast this tonoplast and this liposome fuse and it transfer it exchange the DNA so this DNA is transferred into the nucleus this is the method called liposome mediated method of gene transfer so the gene is transferred into the target cell the method is liposome mediated method or it's called as lipofection other name of this is lipofection 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 what is lipofection liposome mediated transfer of gene so first transfer is chemical method of gene transfer micro injection of gene transfer electroporation of gene transfer electroporation by electric field pore is made in the plasma plasma membrane through this the dna is passed through allow it to pass the liposome mediated finally there is a method under direct gene transfer that is biolistics biolistics can be named as several by either biolistics or it's called as gene gun method or particle gun method or micro projectile it's called micro projectile gene gun method biolistics so many names are given for this what's this method in this method here there is a barrel of particle gun this is the gene gun barrel this structure is a gene gun barrel gene gun barrel the dna is coated with micro particles of gold or tungsten very minute particle that is 1 2 3 1 2 3 micrometer very thin minute particles of gold or tungsten coated dna dna is coated with minute particles of gold or tungsten through this barrel gene gun ba barrel see there is a plastic disc this is the plastic disc with dna coated gold particles and this is the disc stopped by a screen and this is the target cell plant cell is present here so through this when the gene gun method these particles are fall or these are gun shot the gun method or biolistic method gene gun method it can be shot out directly towards the plant cell and the plant cells can be isolated and it allowed to culture it and it make it as a desirable character this method is biolistics so direct gene transfer method these are different types of direct gene transfer method five different types you learn today what are they chemical method of gene transfer micro injection method of gene transfer electroporation method of gene transfer liposome mediated gene transfer method of gene transfer finally biolistics method of gene transfer what are the other names of biolist biolistics gene gun method or short gun method particle gun method micro projectile method micro projectile method let's recall what you learned today first the topic is 
types of vectors under this you write about plasmid PBR322 TI plasmid then next question competent of host how the host is compete to accept the recombinant DNA then last question only three question you are going to learn learn it learn it very clear without any doubt and very important topic this all and finally the direct gene transfer method they are chemical method of gene transfer micro injection method of gene transfer electroporation liposome mediated gene transfer and biolistics thank you